During my years as a roofing contractor, I've investigated thousands of leaks and shingle roofs, and I bet more than half of them came from around pipes like this that were coming out of the roof. In this section, I'm going to show you several techniques for flashing pipe penetrations out of your roof. I've developed several techniques that I'll show you that will ensure your flashings will remain leak-free for years. Now pipes like this PVC vent stack are common on almost all roofs. Sometimes they can be made out of other types of plastic or on old, older homes they might be cast iron or something like that. But the principle for flashing them is the same, so don't be thrown off if the pipe doesn't look exactly like this. You want to start by making sure that the decking is around the pipe is sound and uh, cleaning any old tar off the pipe. A lot of times people will put tar on this. A lot of times you'll have leaks here, so the decking will be bad. So you can do this next step before you've got any of the underlayments on. You can do it after you got the underlayment on and not the shingles on. In this case, we've already got the shingles on, worked up to the pipe. It uh, doesn't really matter. This is actually going to work really well. So cut out a, approximately a two by two square of ice and water shield, and we're going to place this around the pipe. So you can cut this to fit really easily. This is what I like to do is uh, set this on top here, and then see so just about in the middle, and then make sure you got it centered. Cut a little X in that. You want to keep it tight, tight around the pipe as you can. And place it in place like that. Once you've got your little X cut out of the ice and water shield, you can just slip it down around the pipe like this. And uh, this actually works out really nice because it's shingled uh, over top of this other shingle. So if any water ever did get through here, uh, chances are it's going to run down over the shingle. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit subscribe so you can be a part of my channel. You can watch all my videos that cover complete stages of both shingle and metal roofing. There's tons more content coming out soon about all aspects of roofing, including skylights and trim and sheds and whatever you're interested in. So as you're working your shingles up around the pipe, uh, be careful to try to cut your shingles as tight to the pipe as you can. You can't always get it ac completely accurate. Um, what we did is uh, just kind of eye get it eyeballed here with this other pipe, see where it is, uh, cut out a little bit, and just keep fitting it so that you get relatively close. This is okay. Um, we're going to put the flashing on next, but what you could do too here is do some caulking uh, around this pipe. you get got some holes here uh, around uh, around the ice and water shield that we've already installed. So you can put some caulking in here. We're not going to do that right now, but keeping uh, as tight a seal just around this pipe as possible to keep any little minor leaks to get back behind here uh, out of your house is going to be helpful. For this type of PVC pipe, you've got two main options for your flashing. This plastic flashing is the more popular type in my area. It's cheap and easy to install, but the only problem is that it lasts maybe six or eight years before the plastic wears out and it starts to crack right around here where the flashing meets the pipe. I'm going to show you a technique to double the life of this type of flashing in a minute. <clears throat> the other main type of flashing uh, that you could use for this type of pipe is a, this type of lead flashing. This type of <clears throat> pipe boot is good because the lead uh, boot doesn't rust or wear out as quickly as the plastic boots. While it might seem like a much better choice uh, than the plastic boot because it really will last forever, there are a few important drawbacks that I want you to be aware of. Uh, these definitely are harder to install, especially on steep roofs like we have, so you have to be careful with them. In this case, we have, I have gotten the boot that's rated for the 12-12 roof that we're installing it on, so you have to know that. Um, also, and for some reason I can't explain, the squirrels in my area love to chew on these boots. Uh, so while lead is very toxic to humans, the, the squirrels around here love to chew away, and I've stopped really using these boots because I've had so many callbacks on leaks caused by squirrel damage. We'll come back a year later and the squirrels will have gnawed this. I've seen them gnaw this entire boot down all the way to the roof. So we will show you how to install this boot though and I've got a technique to help combat uh, the squirrels getting in there. So getting back to the plastic flashing, you wanna make sure to uh, order fla flashings that fit the different sizes of pipes. So going back to the estimating, you wanna make sure that you measure the pipes and get the right size. Um, most uh, plumbing vents like this PVC pipe are between an inch and a half and three inches. Occasionally we see a four inch pipe. Um, so generally I order these three in one flashings and they fit between uh, a one inch, let's see here, inch and a quarter 
uh, up to three inch size pipes. So you get several different size pipes and then you've got these little rings um, here around it, uh, around the, the rubber part here that you pull off depending on what size pipe uh, you've got. So if you've got the three in one, note the size of the pipe and tear out the right ring so that the flashing fits snugly around the pipe. Um, before you slide the flashing down uh, on the pipe, <clears throat> I like to apply the bead of sealant uh, around the base of the pipe as sort of extra protection. So you want to kind of figure out where this pipe is going to sit in relation to the, the boot is going to sit in relation to the pipe. Put a bead of sealant down here so that when you put this down here, that sealant's sort of like underneath the flashing. It's going to last a lot, uh, a lot longer that way. So in this case, I'm just going to re remove this first ring right here, uh, what I like to do is get it started uh, with a razor knife right here. Uh, just cut it very carefully because it's easy to, to make it too, too much. And then you can see once you've got it started, you, you've got it out there like that. Resist the temptation to try to squeeze the boot on without removing the correct ring because um, the more tension that's on it like that, the quicker it's going to cause this rubber to split. So this is going to be tight, but not overly tight, because I could have slipped it over there with that ring on it. Um, so the next step then is going to be to slide this over the top of the pipe. You can see it still fits pretty tightly. Like that. Uh, you want to make sure that the flashing fits tight on the deck. These, Three-in-one boots are pretty good, even up to this 12-12. It's pretty flexible, so uh, it fits on there right. It's real tight to the deck. All right, now that we've got this seated flat on here, we're going to put a couple of nails in it uh, in the flashing to hold it down. One of the biggest mistakes that I see make, and I see this cause leaks all the time, is the tendency to want to put nails real close in here at the corners. Um, you'd think that because maybe the, the flashing's sticking up or not sitting flat or whatever, and that's going to hold it down real well. Uh, the problem with that is that uh, what's going to happen later as this nail starts to loosen is water is going to travel under here and leak in that hole in the shingle caused by the nail. So even if you caulk on the top of it or whatever, water can get in there, leak behind the, and underneath the flashing. So what you want to do is avoid putting any nails right in the corner here. I like to put, put fasteners closer to here where they're far away from the edge. Um, that's going to hold down the flashing just fine. And one thing that works really well, because these nails are going to be exposed when it's done, um, is use a uh, wash a screw like this. This is a screw that's used typically for metal roofing. It's got a little washer uh, head on the top, and these are going to hold in really tightly for the long term. And also, you've got that washer on the top, so you're not going to need to um, uh, put any sealant on the top. So, <clears throat> so you can put nails or screws. Uh, right in here, we're going to put a couple nails along the edge and along the top because these are going to get shingled on too, but you want to be able to, you want to make sure to put these nails pretty close to the edge where the shingles that we bring in next are going to cover them. Um, and then also put a dab of sealant on top of these nail heads again, so if any water gets under there, they're going to be, uh, it's going to be covered. What I've noticed over the years is that when these plastic flashings fail, they always break right here around the pipe where the flashing is under tension. So to help extend the life of these, I've developed a technique that places a second boot right on top of the first. This gives you two layers of protection. The second boot will eventually split here, usually right here in the back, but then you've got the first boot on with the quality seal still in place. To make the second boot, all you need to do is just take a regular flashing and cut off the flat base portion so you're left just with this cone-shaped flashing. Uh, slide it onto the pipe and you're good to go. As I mentioned, an alternative to the plastic pipe flashing I just used is this lead pipe boot. These are great products if they're installed correctly. 
Lead is a non-corrosive metal, so theoretically, these boots can last as long as the shingles. You've gotta be careful when installing them, however, as they're soft, and if you bend them too much or force it, you can crease them and break the metal. The basic idea here is to slip this boot over the pipe and then fold the top down into the pipe. So first what you wanna do is get the flashing seated on the roof and test for sizing. Once you've got the flashing seated, check the height of the boot in relation to the top of the pipe. You may need to either trim the top of the flashing off or trim the pipe down low enough, which is what we had to do, so that the pipe is shorter than the top of the flashing because you're gonna need some, some of this flashing to bend down uh, into the top of the pipe. If there's too much boot above the pipe, uh, you're gonna need to trim that down a little bit as well. So once you've got everything sized right, fold the, the flashing down carefully into the top of the pipe. Work yourself around carefully until all of, of the flashing is in the pipe and there's no place where water can get between the flashing and the outside of the pipe. Once you've got that on, you can go ahead and nail the base of the flashing, just like the plastic flashing, and install the shingles in the same manner. All right, so you can see I put my nails around it. I got my screws down at the base away from the corners where any water could run into them. Um, it's nailed down well. Um, again, I'd put some caulk down at least over top of these screws, um, but I'm not, I'm not gonna do that because we're gonna take this off in a minute. But at any rate, um, I wanna show you uh, something interesting that happened because the next step obviously is to bring the next course of shingles up that are gonna come around the pipe flashing. So um, due to our, the uh, pattern, the shingles that we have run, uh, this was the last small piece in our um, five, five course step off. Um, so the next shingle could be a full-size shingle, but I want you to notice what happens when, <clears throat> when I put this shingle on. And what happens is the end of this shingle comes real close to the edge of this pipe flashing. So what you normally do is cut out around it, but this, this joint is way too close to the edge of this pipe flashing uh, for what I'd feel comfortable with, because you remember, water can always come in this butt joint and run down here and it could get under your flashing or get you get to your nails or anything so you always want to be super cautious with where the shingles are going around your pipe flashing so instead of putting a full size piece in uh, what we're going to do is put a smaller piece in over here that's going to move that full size shingle over a little bit and keep that butt joint well out of the range of of this uh, this pipe flashing here All right, so I got our little piece cut in here. Um, again, you don't want to make it too big and get this butt joint too close to this joint. So we got a nice six inches away from there, but still left enough to get a couple nails solidly into the decking. And then um, I made this piece right here. And uh, you know, you just gotta take your time. Again, it's like the piece that was underneath it. Um, just set the shingle up here, measured where the pipe is, cut out a little bit, keep fitting it. Uh, you want to make sure that you're going to pay attention to where your chalk line is up here and then also where the shingle is going to stop down here. And then once we got it in place, I like how it's cut. It's not binding in the back here. A lot of times you come back and just trim a little bit here because you want to get it tight to the pipe. But um, if you cut it too, too tight, it's going to ride up a little bit and you don't want that. <clears throat> so you want to cut it tight so that it sits fully down and it's sitting right here and leaves the proper reveal uh, for the shingle below it. So once I've got this on, I'm gonna go ahead and put my nails in. You wanna keep in mind where the butt joints are gonna be from the shingles up top, but most importantly, you don't wanna put any nails in through this flashing. So I'm gonna put my nails um, around on the outside edge of this flashing and not through this. Um, another thing that you, that you could do, I'm not gonna do it right here for the video, but put a nice bead of sealant right, right through here, all the way around it, so that when you set this shingle over top of it, it's well embedded in the sealant, and there's no way for water to get under here. Like all the sealants that you use, I always recommend putting the sealant down underneath the shingles, uh, not put the shingle on and then caulk around it, because the sealant's gonna last a lot longer if it's not exposed to ultraviolet light and the weather and that sort of thing. So, all right, so I got this shingle on. Nails are not, not anywhere near the flashing. And uh, 
as I did with the little piece over here on the edge, you're, you want to, you may have to uh, adjust the pattern of the shingles. We have this nice even pattern going up here, but uh, what I'm going to do with the next shingle is bring, bring a smaller piece in so the butt joints here lands well, on e well between these two nails. Full size shingle goes out here. And uh, then you can get back to your pattern once you've sh kept shingling up the roof past this. But uh, when you encounter obstacles like this and with the dormer and stuff, as I'll show you later, um, you might need to adjust your pattern uh, to accommodate for little pieces or for getting the shingles set right. So think about that when you're putting your nails in where the next shingle up is going to go. But uh, that's about it. And that's a, that's a good way to put this pipe flashing on. The uh, plastic pipe flashing is shingled around the same way as the lead pipe flashing. So it's, a, it's the same thing. The base is a little bit bigger, but it's the same, same technique. All right, so once you've got your lead flashing on, I'll probably do this after we get the shingles on and everything. Uh, I want to give you a pro tip here on how to keep the squirrels from chewing into your lead pipe. I picked this up from my buddy Gene Taylor in Tallahassee, Florida. And what he does is take some galvanized hardware cloth like this, cut out a piece, and just wrap the entire flashing with this, do the same thing, tuck it into the top of the pipe, uh, just like we did the lead flashing. Uh, maybe use a little piece of wire to attach it real well. And uh, that'll keep the squirrels off because they don't want to chew through this, uh, this galvanized steel, it's too hard for them. Uh, so that makes it unappealing for the squirrels. So if you got a lot of squirrels and trees overhanging your roof uh, and you want to use this lead pipe boot, uh, go with the galvanized hardware cloth to keep them off. Before I start on this flashing on this metal pipe, I want to make an important point about this type of flashing. It's all very similar to the other types of pipe flashing that I've done. And the techniques that I've shown you with the PVC pipe are going to work just as well with a cast iron pipe. Uh, it's very similar to this galvanized pipe. Um, it's also very much the same thing conceptually as you would use to flash around this type of a square vent uh, or even the turbine vent that I showed you earlier in the ventilation section or the power fan. It's all basically the same idea. While they might look different, the same ideas and principles apply about where the butt joints on the shingles go, where you're going to nail it, where not to nail it, that sort of thing. So I'm not going to demonstrate a power fan and a uh, turbine vent and one of these square vents or another type of slant back vents or any kind of different appliance that you might find on your roof, but they're all the same types of flashings when you get down to the principles and same as this metal type of flashing. So just keep that in mind if you've got some questions about those types of flashings. What I'm about to show you is going to work just as well with any of those other things. So, so you may encounter this type of metal pipe on, on a roof. Okay, generally these sort of metal flashings are used around pipes that are venting, venting either a gas appliance such as a furnace or water heater or they may be used in a vent such as a range hood or a bathroom exhaust fan or something like that. Similarly, um, <clears throat> you might find the, the square vent like I just showed you that's going to vent a, a bathroom fan or a range hood is going to come up to that. So one thing that I always encourage you to do and as a roofing contractor I'm always looking out for is uh, making sure that these kind of pipes are still in use. Um, a lot of times uh, homeowners may have switched to an uh, electric appliance over an old gas furnace or something like that. So obviously if something that's being vented in this or any of those other vents is not working, um, then you know you can just take this out, patch the decking like I showed you before and get rid of it because the fewer holes that you have in your roof uh, the better. So in regards to these sort of metal pipes I found that these types of boots have a pretty long life. So if the flashing that's already on your roof is in really good shape, it's not shot full of nail holes uh, or all bent up and there's a great deal of rust on it, you're probably going to do okay to leave that flashing on the roof and not necessarily replace it if you don't want to. Um, if it looks suspect, however, now's the time to get a new one. Uh, you can most easily find these sort of replacement flashings at your local HVAC or plumbing supply house. Um, your best bet, honestly, is just to take the old flashing in and have them match it up with a new one as these come in a range of specific sizes. Um, if you can't take the old one in and you need to measure uh, the diameter of the pipe so that they can get you a new boot. So you can usually take the cap off uh, and measure the top of the pipe to get this specific diameter because they're all, uh, the, the boots all come in sizes, um, different sizes depending on whether it's a double wall or triple wall pipe or a single wall pipe, that sort of thing. So an important thing to note as well 
is that these boots also come in sizes for standard pitch and steep slope roofs. Uh, make sure uh, <clears throat> that you also get uh, this ring, which is called a storm collar. Um, because the metal boot doesn't necessarily fit as tightly around the pipe as a rubber one would, this collar is an important uh, step in preventing water from getting down the side uh, of the pipe and getting behind your boot. So this type of flashing is installed very similarly to the other flashings that we've done. So I've skipping through a couple of steps, but I left uh, some of the ice and water shield that I slipped, that I put down around the pipe uh, out here so you can see it. So you definitely want to do that. Uh, the next step is, although I've already got this boot down, um, before you slide it down completely, I always like to take uh, some caulk and put it like right here on the pipe. So right below the area that the, the flashing is going to sit when it's fully seated. That way when you slide the pipe down, it kind of embeds itself um, in, in that seal. And again, it's underneath the pipe. So, so once you've done that, go ahead and slide this down. We're going to nail it all the way around. Use the screw technique like I showed you before. Again, always keep your nails away from the corner. A lot of times with these metal things, it might be kicked up a little bit. You want to nail it right there. Never do that. I like to keep them in. Uh, this metal's nice and rigid, it's not going to go anywhere. So, once you've got your boot down, you want to go ahead and slide, um, slide your storm collar down uh, tight on the pipe boot. Now, they come in different sizes. For this double wall pipe, they make this uh, pre made uh, uh, storm collar that, um, that, that you don't have to adjust. Some of them come in a big ring with this little tab that you sort of customize and fold over on it and stuff like that. It's pretty self-explanatory if you have one. Again, double wall pipe comes with this type. And uh, you know, I want you to do the same thing that we did before. Before you slide this down all the way, put a nice liberal bead of sealant right above where it's going to sit. Once you've got the storm collar down, you can go ahead and put some more caulk around the top of this, uh, the top of the storm collar if you need to, just for good measure, smooth it down. Again, it's not going to last as long out here, but never, never going to hurt anything. Um, and then as far as uh, flashing around the base of it, it's just like the pipe flashing that we, we did with the PVC pipe. Um, this one, since these shingles were already on here, it's not quite right, but you know, you basically want the shingles underneath it up into the lower part of the pipe here. And then starting it here, you know, somewhere between here and here, you want to start bringing your shingles over top of it. So it's going to look just like the pipe that we did with the PVC boot, um, where you've got shingles that fit tightly around the base of it here. Never hurts to put some sealant down before you bring those shingles over and cut it. Um, you're going to have, because this is a lot bigger than that little PVC boot, you're going to have several courses that go up and around it. So watch where your, uh, the butt joints and the shingles land um, in regards to the edge of uh, your boot right here. So you have to be careful when you're doing that. If you'd like the complete series for yourself on how to do shingle or metal roofing, you can go to my website, roofingintelligence.com, and there you can get a membership to either stream or you can get a DVD in the mail. that will show you how to do all the steps for either of those types of roofing. Enjoy this video. Thanks so much for watching.